Sport with Jim Rosenthal. And to Carlton Sport. Well, Charlton ran the first half at the Valley on Sunday and then Palace took total control. So Palace seems set for the final, but their home form's patchy and Charlton are excellent travellers. Well, Ian St John, you watched the first match. The pros, Dave Bassett included, they hate the playoffs, but they're a great spectacle. <laughs> you can understand, Jim, why they don't like it. I mean, it's nerve-tingling time for them, but... I think the fans, I think the neutrals, I think people like myself, I love the playoffs. I think it keeps the interest going right through the season. And, you know, from teams in mid-table a couple of months ago can get in the playoffs. I just think they're good. And I, I always look forward to them. Absolutely. I agree with you 100% on that, man. Well, if this game is half as good as Sunday's, we're in for a real treat. Let's join our commentator at Selhurst Park tonight. It's Brian Moore. Palace trying so hard to keep their feet on the ground after their 2-1 win at Charlton in the first leg. Now make one change. The central defender, Lee Anderson, the Norwegian, has picked up an injury. And Palace now plunged 19-year-old Robert Quinn into the action for only his second game. David Hopkin and Gareth Davis are still on the injured list. Charlton also have a change forced on them. Mark Robson has a leg injury, so Steve Brown normally a right back comes into the midfield to partner Lee Bowyer with John Robinson reverting to the left flank and 35 year old Gary Nelson gets a recall to the attack alongside Carl Lieburn he replaces Bradley Allen who drops to sub the referee tonight is Terry Heilbron from County Durham well a big test then for young Robert Quinn a youngster from Kent as I say only his second full game he came on as a sub on Sunday and another game chalked up for the 35 year old Gary Nelson this is 714 in a splendid career white hot rivalry between these two South London sides and everything at stake tonight in this first all London clash in the 10 year history of the playoffs Charlton tonight in the white strip they've changed and it's in the red and blue. Both sides looking to get one step nearer the big time in the Premiership, a night when there's certainly be joy for some and tears for others. And the first touch of the ball for the Charlton keeper, Andy Pedersen. And tension on the bench as well. Alan Kerbishley in the centre there, the Charlton manager. is a good break, Nadal, possibilities here, Edworthy coming up on the far side, but Robinson had tracked back so well for Charlton that is his throw Gert with it Gert with a, a long throw there Nadal trying to get on the end of it Edworthy tussling with Robinson, knocked back in again by Pitcher. Friedman looking to get there first. And Barmer conceding the corner. But Charlton scored after 55 seconds on Sunday. It's Palace who are doing all the early pressing here at Selhurst Park tonight. Houghton with the free kick, with the corner roller. Pitcher playing it in again. Only Nelson is up. And Martin coolly gets outside his box and hammers it back into that Charlton half again. Up goes Chris White. Nelson now for Charlton, their first real attack. No free kick. But they get a corner. Which Robinson will take. Chris White's forward for this and Barmer. Lieburn at six foot three. Once again, the obvious target. Number eight there. But they were defending really well in numbers there. Crystal Palace and Nadar hooking it up to Friedman, who's had a terrific season with 20 goals. And he plays the ball nicely for Nadar. And still Nadar, a chance now. 
Can Houghton finish it off? It's there! Ray Houghton for Crystal Palace! Look at that joy on his face! He knows that will go a long, long way towards booking a Wembley place for Crystal Palace now. They've increased their advantage from a 2-1 from the first leg to a 3-1 aggregate. Nadar does well. It falls loose for Ray Houghton. Well, I was privileged to see Ray's goal in New Jersey in the World Cup for the Republic of Ireland against Italy and that brought him tremendous joy. But you could see on the look on his face that was not far from being in second place. he can, Robinson and Gary Nelson in there and it very nearly fell for him he was really poised there but it was just knocked off his head I think by Andy Roberts Martin will go for this one and successfully gets it it was a good cross by Robinson and it just needed to clear, actually it was uh, it was young Robert Quinn who got the valuable header in this free kick Farmer's gone forward for it White is in there too Rufus has stayed back this time though there's the free kick oh there's a possibility here White had a dab at it so did Leeburn and there's a lot of hacking going on there and the referee will give what Leeburn in fact had probably the best chance of the lot there going to be a drop ball now that could be interesting seven yards out Palace are making sure there's a red wall between them and Nigel Martin who probably won't see the ball once it bounces now will Charlton get a strike here it'll be an extraordinary goal if they do just look at that huddle there oh my goodness it very nearly fell for Charlton in the end it was uh, Kenny Brown with a really good overhead kick but brought relief White oh yeah better spell this for Charlton they're steadying the ship a little bit now pitcher getting it away Houghton and now Brown Nadar running into Jackson and gets past Jackson Newton's after him, but Nadar is inside the box. And Newton tracks back beautifully there. This is where the uh, chance fell, actually. Chris White was in there. It was Lieburn who had a shot save. And then, uh, in a sense, all hell broke loose. And eventually got hold of it. Nadar being chased by Boya. But Boya certainly made a contact there. The crowd are saying off, off, off. My impression was that there was certainly another Charlton player between Boya and that incident and the, the uh, Charlton goal. There's the risk of a red card, certainly. But I think the odds are probably a yellow one it is he got tangled up there and he certainly pulled on uh, George Nadal uh, it was worth a yellow card but certainly not a red Houghton playing it in Chris White getting it away Pitcher playing it forward again Sean Newton. Oh, he's 
trying to get that through to Robinson, might just do it. Oh, Robinson got a touch on it, the keeper's out, Lee Byrne will leap for this one, there's his header, kicked off the line by David Tuttle. And suddenly the attack was on there for Crystal Palace until Rufus stepped in, but that was very nearly a golden opportunity for Charlton to get right back in the game. Linesman flagging, a free kick for Charlton. This really was close, and it was persistent play there by Robinson. And uh, Martin stranded for a moment, up jumps big Carl Leeburn, and it's kicked off the line by David Tuttle. Nelson. Robinson. There's his cross again towards Leeburn, and towards Newton! Oh, a great save that by Nigel Martin. And the ball had gone out to the corner. It's a good cross by Robinson. Leeburn jumped for it, but it was Newton's header. That would have just crept in the far post. Good work by Nigel Martin. Charlton's corner looking for an equaliser here as half-time approaches, but not there. Nadar gets it away. Newton. Back to Robinson again. Jackson. Nearly uh, able for Nelson to turn that in. Nelson claimed the ball came off uh, Carl Viert, but the ref has given the goal kick. A great one handed save. fans with Ray Houghton scoring in the first five minutes to extend their aggregate to 3-1, 1-0 on the night. But uh, Charlton coming back, having their chances as well, but as of late just being unable to finish them off. So the half-time score here in this vital playoff game at Selhurst Park is Crystal Palace 1, Charlton Athletic 0. And we'll be back with the second half. Charlton kick off the second half, slightly different fashion as Boya aims a long shot towards Nigel Martin, but it didn't come off. And it's very much the form team. They've lost only four out of 21 since Dave Bassett took over. Yet, Nadar, played in again, Edison's there. thinking of making a substitution, Jamie Stewart. Full back. Right. Chris 
wide again. Bringing in a long one towards Lieburn. Goal kick. Looks as though there's a double substitution. David White, a striker, is coming on. Chris White, the defender, and Gary Nelson are going off. So Nelson and Chris White go off. David White, a striker, and Jamie Stewart. A left back comes on to replace Chris White. So David White, a former Palace player, and Jamie Stewart, number 13, just back from injury. Charles will make their double substitution. Oops. And now Edworthy with a throw. Friedman. Oh! It looked to be a bad cross, but it wasn't going to reach Nadar or Brown had gone motoring in. Uh, in the end, though, it just for a moment, had Pedersen in trouble. Quinn putting it away in a touch. Jackson, Lieber getting a touch on it. And Palace getting it away under a good deal of pressure. Pumped in again by Rufus. The flag is up. Well, White has put the ball in the net, but the flag was up long before he did so. And things are getting just a little hot out there now. The stakes are high. And the tempers with them. Flag by now was up for an offside against David White, but it was a cool bit of finishing for all that. Steve Brown to Lee Bowyer. Came off Edworthy, so it's a throw to Charlton. It's Stuart Barmer with it now. Trying to bring in Jamie Stewart. Edworthy brings it away. Houghton takes over. Up to Friedman. Great break through the middle by uh, Mark Edworthy, the fullback, and now he's gone wide. Now, what's his cross like? It's a good looking one towards Kenny Brown. Friedman again, looking to find some way of finishing it off. No penalty. Goal kick. Good decision by the referee, too. wriggling performance here and uh, the referee decided that was a goal kick there's some good play here by Friedman Dave Bassett knows that we're halfway through the second half now and Wembley is looking a very strong possibility such a fiercely passionate game with both sides throwing a lot into attack we've just had that one goal right at the start from Ray Houghton Nadar Houghton's little touch tries to get it back from Nadar it falls instead for Rufus for Charlton Athletic and now Bowyer Edworthy puts it away in a touch Charlton's throw Robinson with it Stewart with it, Robinson. Bowyer. Oh, and the header there. In the end, Tuttle. It was young Robert Quinn's header that suddenly put them in trouble. And as uh, Martin desperately tried to get back, it was David Tuttle. Bowyer made things difficult. The number five heads back towards his own goal, Robert Quinn. 
And in the end, Tuttle puts it over his own crossbar for Charlton's corner. Chances fleetingly are still there for Charlton. Here comes the corner. Newton's shot, driven really well, but he hit pitcher with it. Now Jamie Stewart, knocked in again. There was claim a handball there, but the referee saw nothing and uh, he was probably right. Ooh, mistake there by pitcher. Brown picks it up, looks for somebody to come in now, and it's Sean Newton. He's had a really good game. There's his cross. Pitcher kept it out. Newton again. There's his cross again towards Reburn. Behind for the goal kick. But this is a good spell for Charlton. And Sean Newton is on the end of most things. A the substitution then for Charlton Athletic. They're taking off Matt Jackson, the fullback, and bringing Bradley Allen, a striker on. So that means they're prepared now to take risks at the back in order to throw everything at the uh, Crystal Palace goal. Leeburn, Allen and White up front. So really it's the last throw of the dice for Charlton. Newton who's been quite outstanding tonight with this pass a good one to Jamie Stewart and he's done well since he's come on for Chris White at left back here's Lee Bowyer knocking the ball in towards Robinson it looked as though there was a push on Robinson there too and uh, Dave Bassett now down the pitch side pressure and the tension maybe has got to him as well on that seat in the stand on Sunday at the Valley and his goal here tonight. Shot wide from Dyer. Inside the last five minutes. Dyer catching it well, but just wide. Charlton. 
Newton versus Kenny Brown. Well, Newton, who got the whole thing going in 55 seconds on Saturday. And off! Some good work there by Nigel Martin. Bradley Allen was just in behind him, looking for that little flick on. And it was touched, in fact, by the defender. Allen couldn't quite get the one that really mounted, and uh, Martin was on it like a ton of bricks. Charlton still looking for that goal. They still don't believe it's all up yet. But it will be in a matter of seconds now. Edworthy to Nadal. Fire in space on the far side. Nadal wanting to run with it though, and Boya coming back with him too. Bruce Dyer. They get a corner. Time added on at the end of 90 minutes. Referee looking at the watch. And Palace a matter of seconds away now with Dave Bassett as their manager with a Wembley appearance then really playing for the big stakes Brown in towards Dyer will be a Paris throw what a transformation he's made season that had promised so much. Dyer can finish it off for good and all here. No, Charlton get it away again. And Charlton have given their fans a terrific season with some wonderful football. But in the end it wasn't quite enough. And it's the form team Crystal Palace with the arrival in February of Dave Bassett will be going through to that Wembley final. Referee looking at the watch again. possibility of bouncing straight back into the Premiership after one season out of it. Ray Houghton's goal and Ray Houghton's performance both on Sunday and here tonight have been so much that separated the two sides. Charlton came tonight and they battled well with a lot of pace and with a few chances but in the end it wasn't going to be their night. It's a night of great triumph again for Dave Bassett. In football they say never underestimate a Dave Bassett side and again he has turned this Palace club round from his arrival in February to just four defeats in 22 games now and the form team will now go on to a Wembley with a great chance of leaping straight back into the Premiership. A side that's playing with terrific confidence and with that cutting edge to them as well. One goal down at the Valley, right at the start, they came back with great discipline to win and they put their seal on the game so early here at Sellers Park tonight. So the final score then as the crowd are on the pitch. Here tonight, Crystal Palace 1, Charlton 0. And on aggregate, 3-1 to the Palace. They go through to Wembley. Well, Dave, the Eagles certainly flew tonight, didn't they? Well, it was a hard game. It was a cup tie. Uh, Charlton played very well tonight, and uh, they battled us all the way. We got the great start we wanted to, right out in the superb goal. We had one or two anxious moments, and the players were a bit nervous, but uh, we've got the result, and we're absolutely delighted, obviously. The crowd love you for that goal. Yes, yeah, an important goal. Uh, we got a bad start on Sunday. We went to down after a minute. I think it was her turn this evening. Uh, you know, it just fell for me and I hit it with outside my right peg and uh, I was very, very pleased to see it fly in the back of the net. It gave us a two-goal cushion and uh, I thought we, we deserved to win the night. It was a tough game, Charlton played ever so well, very young team, but I think if they can keep them together they'll do well next season. Uh, but it's a pleasure for tonight, it's a pleasure for the fans, it's a fans night tonight, as well as ourselves, and we're looking forward to Wembley now. I think we played ever so well tonight, I don't think anyone at the ground tonight would deny we deserve to win the game. Nigel Martin saved them on four or five occasions, but we really lost the match. Well, we really lost the tie in the second half at the Valley. That was that was so disappointing for us. So, you know, I thought our, our uh, two centre halves were superb tonight. They dealt with everything. We had a few little scary moments, a few off the line, you know. But you're going to get that. You know, the, the pitch wasn't the best. 
um, you know, with helping things on rather than getting it down. And you know, all in all, you know, I think I think it was a fair result over the over the two legs. Yeah, we just didn't have the luck with us today. Um, you know, to, we played against teams that you know scuff shots, and they go in, but uh, just the luck weren't with us today. And where does it leave Gary Nelson now? Well. Um, Probably going to watch Plymouth at Wembley if they've got there. Um, I would have loved it to have been at Charlton, but uh, I've been in football long enough to know it's not always dream ending. So, um, no, not to be this time. And, uh, you know, I'd, we'll have to just see what comes up in the summer. I'm so proud of them the way they played. They never gave up. And, uh, you know, they've had a great season. And I think everyone at Charlton should be proud of them. Fantastic scenes. This is what Crystal Palace want and Crystal Palace deserve. And hopefully, uh, you know, we can go one step further and get in the Premiership. Nick Clark asking the questions at Selhurst. Now then, St. Alan Kerbishley said before the game that Charlton were desperate for an early goal. Palace got it and it proved decisive. Well, Jim, you have to feel so much for, for Charlton tonight because I, I thought they played ever so well, especially in the first half. But the goal, you know, that, that seen them off early on after three minutes by Ray Houghton was a real quality affair. You know, George Nadal had done ever so well on the break here. But look at this for quality. Outside of his feet, bent it in the top corner. You know, that is an experienced player, that's a class player. And when he was called upon to do it, he did it. But, you know, you've got to give Charlton a lot of credit because they came back and they came back. And if it hadn't been for Nigel Martin, you know, I think probably they'd got a couple of goals in the first half because Martin made some incredible saves. This one here, he made from Carl Lieburn. And the ball comes into the box, big Chrissy White's up there, the ball runs away from him, and there it, now that was a great stop with a goalkeeper, that was, you know, like Schmeichel, you know, who does that sort of stuff, it was terrific. And this, again, was another save from, uh, from uh, Sean Newton, now this is a brilliant save. So under all the pressure that they, they, were, they were getting there, their experienced man did the business for them, a goalkeeper. He's a, a fellow who stayed, and Palace have lost so many players during the season, saying it's remarkable that they're at Wembley. Well, they've lost all, all what we thought were real quality players, you know, Salakos, the Armstrongs, Southgate, Shaw, Coleman, all gone. Now they've got this crop here, mm. and they've got them to Wembley, Jim. I think it's, you know, Harry Bass has done a marvellous job, really. You, you've got to sympathise, though, with Alan Kerbish. You said that Charlton were unlucky tonight. Another goal line clearance uh, from Palace, I mean, uh, denied them. Tuttle, I think it was. Well, uh, you know, they will look back on this and say, well, you know, why didn't they get a goal line? We don't know. And in football, Jim, this is what happens. You know, you get a lot of pressure, you get a lot of chances, and nothing goes for you. And there's one off the line, Tuttle on the line. Thank you very much, knocks it clear, and it was never going to go in for them. Now, how about Charlton's Lee Bowyer? Should he stay or should he go? Well, everybody's saying that now at the end of the season for him. I personally think he should go. I think he's got to go and step up a class. I think he's got to, to play with better players, train with better players. And that's no disrespect uh, to, to the lads at, at Charlton. But I think if is going to fulfil his potential, and he's got a lot of potential, Jim, he's got to step up and, and play with the bigger clubs. I mean, he's worked his socks off, and he's had a very hard season, the lad. And you could see it, you know... Over 50 games. Oh, he's, he's, you know, too many for a young fella like him, I think. We're going to a bigger club with the good players, I think, you know, we'll see, you know, Lee Boy beginning to, you know, really become the player we all think he will. Okay, same, thank you.